Oh, hi there. When you're first getting into fish keeping, there's a lot of very fantastic advice, but there's also some very misleading advice. And when you're new, it can be hard to know what's correct. And so today we're gonna cover some very bad advice so you can have success with your tank. My name is Jennifer and you're watching Fishy Pet Keeping. Stay tuned. So the first bad advice is the one inch per gallon rule. This is a very classic advice that many, many stores give to their customers who get their first aquarium and want to know a little bit more about the fish. And this is an, a very old rule. And uh, I would say don't put a 10 inch fish in a 10 gallon, for example. That's just common sense, you know. And also please don't put a one inch fish in a one gallon that's um, I don't suggest that size tank for any any fish maybe a couple of shrimp and but that's not fish I mean the minimum tank size I recommend for any fish keeper is at least a five gallon tank and uh, I think that's a that's a minimum and when you decorate it and uh, with your hardscape and plants it can quickly go down to a like a 2.5 or 3 gallon. There's a lot of people who don't think about that. But if you do have a, for example, a 5 gallon or a 10 gallon, then this advice can be somewhat helpful, just with the tiniest, tiniest fish out there and also crustaceans, for example, like cherry shrimp or maybe a school of chilresporas or maybe celestial pearl daniels, because they're very tiny fish and you can fit like five of them because they grow to about, up to about an inch and you can fit fit like five of them in a five gallon but i would still be mindful of the waste it, that they produce you're you're gonna have to do a lot more water changes than if you have for example four of them in a five gallon and also you wouldn't really want a 55 inch fish in a 55 gallon for example i would take this advice with a grain of salt just so you're gonna have to do a lot more water changes as I said and uh, if you're a beginner you want you probably want it to be as easy as possible and so I would in a five gallon I would recommend like at most four celestial pearl daniels for example so now when I think about it celestial pearl daniels aren't really suggested for beginners so maybe a couple of handler handlers those are good beginner fish now the second horrible advice that still many people believe it's okay is that you can have your goldfish in your bowl. I'm talking about those classical bowls that are like this big or maybe this big or even this big. Both fancy and the common or comet goldfish are, do get very big and if they only get like this much space they will get very stunted. They will get deformed most probably because they don't have enough room to actually grow and with this they get stunted they get deformed and so they li their life expectancy goes way down the common age for a fancy goldfish for example it's around four to five years when they can in fact get to be about 40 years old and also a common goldfish they need a pond or a gigantic aquarium while the fancy goldfish they need people say they need at least 29 gallons which is accurate but I I personally wouldn't put them in less than like a 50 gallons just they love to swim around even if they are slow swimmers and they like to be in pairs and if you do put like two two of them in a bowl they will most probably suffer very bad ammonia burns even if you have one goldfish they will most probably also suffer from severe ammonia burns and they said that the average lifespan of a goldfish is around five years in a bowl it's common that they die after a few weeks or even days. Another problem is that the hole on the top is also way too small, so it creates a oxygen, oxygen deficiency. They do need a filter, they need oxygen, and it's not really enough to just put an oxygen tablet in there. It's They need to filter their water too, and since they are such big wasters, I can't even talk today, and since they are fish that produce a lot of waste, it's practically impossible to keep that bowl clean also. They just aren't able to be happy in a bowl, unless it's like a 
gigantic bowl. It's not gonna cut it, I'm sorry. Now the third bad advice is that advice from pet spor spores, no, pet spores, pet stores. Advice from pet stores are always accurate. Now I just wanna make it clear that there are stores, or there are a lot of stores that have really good information and very accurate information and they're up to date, but you have to know that not every store is accurate. Now I'm not a US citizen and most of my viewers are from the USA and I don't know if you need training or a certificate to sell, li to sell live animals. I don't think they do, correct me if I'm wrong. And here where I live you need training and a certificate to sell live animals if you work in a pet store. But even if they do have a certificate and also training, it's not guaranteed that, they're, that it's up to date. So I always recommend do your research, it's just a click away nowadays, it's amazing. So look up your particular fish that you want before you get them or any other research that you might want to know. Check multiple resources, watch a lot of YouTube videos, there are a lot of different YouTubers that are amazing at what they do and giving out very accurate information. Now my personal favorite channel to watch is KG Tropicals, they're just amazing. Multiple resources, watch a lot of videos and also make sure that the information isn't outdated. Watch videos that are at most like six years or earlier yeah six years or younger you know what I mean now the fourth advice is disinfect everything when you're doing a water change you will start the nitrogen cycle all over again and you will get to the point where you first started if you disinfect everything you kill all the beneficial bacteria and this, these beneficial bacteria are the ones that keep the aquarium clean from ammonia and nitrite. Because beneficial bacteria, they eat the ammonia source and they make nitrite, which is also toxic for fish, but they, but they consume that too and make it into nitrate, which is way less toxic for fish and also very beneficial for plants. I would say just change the water, maybe scrub, up, scrub off some algae. In the aquarium hobby, less is more. And if you're cleaning your filter, then clean it in a bucket of aquarium water or very quickly under the tap. And as I said, without the beneficial bacteria, your aquarium will very much likely get an ammonia or nitrite spike and deadly for fish. So just do a quick water change, maybe like 50%. Some, some like to do more and that's okay. Just don't scrub everything off and don't, don't boil your gravel. It's just a waste of time. And the fifth advice is just replace the fish if they keep dying. Now first, that's, that's just that's just wrong. Fish lives are also lives and it's a life that you have responsibility of. And while you shouldn't beat yourself up too much if your fish die. Try to learn from your mistake and figure out the cause of the death. Is it fighting? Have you seen your fish fighting lately? Or maybe you, maybe there are symptoms of a disease like it, like the fish are. The fish is hiding a lot or all fishes are hiding, hiding a lot. Are there white spots on the fins or may, maybe the fish just looks dull? then there's likely a disease going on. Or maybe it's ammonia. Now, as I said before, ammonia is very, very toxic to fish and very deadly. If there's too much in the water, your fish can die or get severe ammonia burns. And you can see that on the gills, for example, they're red and such, and it just looks bad. If you just keep buying fish, they're, go they're going to keep dying. Some people don't think about that and they just replace new fish because they don't, they don't know that fish live that much, that much longer. Once you figure out the cause, you can also fix the problem. A, a lot of times a water change is the first thing you want to do. And if you're lucky, that will just perk the aquarium right up. If your fish show signs of a disease or maybe a parasite or fungal infection, Google the symptoms and uh, that way you can know the accurate way of treating them, maybe with medicine or with aquarium salt. And if it's fighting, either move the fish to a different tank, leave it alone, or take it back to the store where you got it. And for ammonia, you can always test the ammonia by, there are test strips and there are liquid tests. And I I generally prefer the, li the liquid ammonia test because I find it fun to do because I feel like I feel like a scientist. And those are some, some of the most horrible advice that you can give or receive from a fish keeper. I would watch out, uh, watch out for these, this advice if you find it or so, just ignore it. 
go somewhere else and read something else because these are these can be potentially dangerous advice for the fish and your tank and even your motivation to keep fish you know if you have constant problems with your fish tank you kind of lose motivation you know and i want you to be as successful as you can be and enjoy this wonderful hobby as long as you do your research it's gonna be fine i promise it's gonna be fine it's gonna be okay there's really nothing to be scared of just try it out and just learn from your mistakes and take good advice and if you're unsure of any advice that someone might give you in person then you can just google it and find out the results almost immediately now that was it for today's video if you like this video then don't forget to give it a like to help the youtube algorithm and also if you like educational stuff like this then don't forget to hit that subscribe button also and also hit that notification bell just so you don't miss anything if you have any video suggestions then please leave them in the comments down below because i would love your suggestions and what you would like to see thank you everybody so much for watching and i will see you in the next one bye